my name is Jack Roach. I live here in Rockchapel. I live here all my life, for almost 70 years. Uh, I have been involved in a lot of community activity, not all in Rockchapel, but throughout Juhalo and throughout Europe, particularly east of Europe. And I suppose, you know, Rockchapel is a great area for traditional music, has been. We have a collection of tunes quite recently that were collected here in, in 1850 and, and uh, tunes that are no longer heard anymore. Uh, and because of the great interest in traditional music and, and, and the, the, the history of traditional music in the area, uh, we had thought about it putting up some sort of building where we could store some of our music and store some of our culture and history and also have a performance area where our own young performers could perform the music and dancing of the area. We had thought about it many years but it was always Cash was always the problem, and uh, then with the arrival of the leader program in, in 88 and 89, we set about putting up this building, and and uh, we, we got it up. I suppose we had thought at the time that getting it up would be a big job. We have discovered that keeping it going is probably a bigger, more difficult, and I'm always saying to community groups, when they're doing putting up some sort of a structure of the building, always think of how difficult it's going to be to run it afterwards because a lot of work goes into running the places. But that as it may, we have been successful. I suppose every summer we, we gather about 150 people in here once a week during the, during the whole summer period and then we have intermittent shows throughout the year. We have been fortunate as well to have a big group of young, very talented young performers and we welded them into a group a couple of years ago. I suppose a couple of things tempted us to do it. The first thing we had, and we always have a lot of international visitors coming to see us, but a few years back a group from the, the, the Van Trapp children from Butte, Montana, and they are the children, the grandchildren of the Van Trapps of Sound for, of the Sound for Music, of Sound of Music. They visited here and during that visit they said they had been all around Ireland and that they had found the same music in every place, which is a fact. And then the following year we had another visitor uh, and she happened to be a granddaughter of a famous Hungarian folk music collector, Bella Baddock. And she felt that traditional Irish music had, was, has become a mass culture. And again, we would have to agree with her. So we set up a group of young people who delved their way back into Irish history to the oldest of tunes and dances. Our oldest dance, a dance called Andrinke Moore, was danced at the Fair of Carmen in the year 1200. Now the Fair of Carmen was a festival that was held along the east coast of Ireland every three years. And in the year 1200 this dance was danced at it. Then the oldest music we could come by was from the book of William Barrett, published in 1583. So when we put all that music and all that dance together, and we put a whole range of old traditional solo step dances, which have probably haven't been seen in Ireland for a hundred years and were danger of extinction, or probably were, had, had disappeared really. But we succeeded, you know, we had to travel up around West Common to all dancing teachers and we had to go way out to Connemara to find some of the old, old steps that were no longer being performed. So we, we put all those together and we, we developed the whole thing into a two-hour show linking much of it with the, the history of Ireland because a lot of our old dances and our old music uh, were associated with major events in the history of Ireland. So we linked the two together and we put a, a show together called A Musical Journey to the History of Ireland. We have performed it here, I suppose 20 times, I said a lot of people got to it. And we were in Tralee and we were in Galway and we were in Dublin and we were in Tipperary. We performed it in Arison Uchtran for President Higgins and we performed it in the European Parliament for the Ireland's Presidency of the European Union. 
So that's basically, there's, there's music classes here every Friday night for the last 30 years I suppose in the village and there is dancing classes here at once every, every Tuesday night as well. So we will continue to keep the old ancient tradition of Ireland alive. Uh, I suppose a lot of it has been modernised in recent times and most of the groups, of all the groups in the country today are doing modern versions of of the Irish tradition and we are doing something completely different. We are going way back hundreds of years with what we are doing. So we have been very happy with what was happening here in Brooklyn Cottage and hope to continue into the future and get more and more young people. Uh, you know, maybe young people might be a little bit sceptical a bit for a while because they never they haven't heard it in radio or television or they haven't seen it in CDs or DVDs. But when we got it started to get invited abroad, and we did shows in Scotland, and we did shows in, in, in Sweden, and when they found that, then they became much more interested, and more and more young people are becoming interested in it. So we hope to continue that into the future. Building started the building in this building. First and foremost, we've been very fortunate in so far that the site was donated by a local person, and and, and uh, she was an old, an old, an elderly lady, and and she stood alone, thank God. Uh, and it was everyone said the village dump, but it wasn't far from it. Uh, and uh, we got in here. No, it was a very difficult site in so far that it was sloping very much towards the river, and we had to get any huge amount of trunking. Uh, would anyone, local one that was knocking a wall, that do anything, they all brought stones and they brought rubble and, and we did it, you know, we got a lot, a lot of voluntary effort. In early in 88 we started the building and there was a huge amount of voluntary work put in by the local community. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and, um, you know, people used to be here in the morning at 7 o'clock preparing for the place for the builder and uh, I think we, we did the whole thing for about 112,000. Uh, and we had we had a commitment of fifty thousand from our Dido Halle, the leader company. Only for that fifty thousand, we probably would never have start uh, attacked it. So uh, the the stonework was done by a local man, and 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 the building was done was done for by what we call direct labour. You know, we bought building we we bought, we, we bought the building material ourselves from different contract from different suppliers around the area, and got great cut prices from people like most of Germany for the windows and you know, see the Miss Street for the roof and uh, we built it as cheap as we possibly could and otherwise we, we wouldn't have been able because you know there's a small enough community here there's only about 400 people in the parish and, and uh, we succeeded in doing it anyway and, and we're very happy with the outcome. <laughs> right the salt performance area the floor here will take 120 people and, and uh, we're lucky enough that we could fill it every Tuesday night during the entire summer. It is amazing the number of visitors that come from, uh, I suppose people would be in Canada, they come out from Canada, they come from Tralee, they come out from Limerick uh, and a lot of guest houses along the Limerick Canada road send people here and uh, we enjoy our performances and the, the Many, many instances, the same people come back every year, every second year. And I suppose we're delighted with that because it is an indication that they enjoyed the previous visit. And, and our own performers, then we, we have our own group who perform here. And the, the format of the show is one hour of our own group doing a formal show, a semi-formal show. And then we have the tea and the home baking. And then the second half, most of the entertainment is provided from the audience. 
And it's amazing the number of people who would like to perform and who come here especially to perform and would be insulted if they weren't asked. So we have no difficulty in, in doing another hour and a half uh, with the audience participation. So it, we find it a very satisfactory setup. And then in the winter time we do intermittent shows. We usually have a show the first Friday of every month. And we have what we call a rambling house on the last Friday of the month. And a rambling house means that a, a lot of local people, and indeed from a fairly wide area, would come in, they'd sing songs, they'd have chats and so on. And, and uh, I, I think in recent times the crowds have got bigger insofar as that many of the people who come were people who might go to the pub for a pint or two previously and can't go now because of the drinking driving regulations and you know they come here and they go to such rambling houses there's a number of them around the area and I think they're filling a great void uh, and, and a great social outlet for, for the, the, the people who were prevented who were more or less prevented from having their weekly or two nights a week session in the local pubs.